Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to My Quilting Live and welcome to another episode of So Someday. Today is the 10th of November and it is the Marine Corps birthday. Why do I know this? Because my husband was a Marine, so he celebrates the Marine Corps birthday. So thank you to all of you Marines out there who served for us and our country. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so today is Sunday and I am going to sew. Technically, quilt. Because there's, you know, I don't really know the true definition of both of them because it's the same thing. Quilting is done by machine. Sewing is done by machine. Sewing is done by hand. Quilting is done by hand. I don't know. We'd have to look that one up to know the difference. But I'm waiting for this to load right here, guys, so I could see comments. I have the camera closer today so that you can see what I am working on. Oh, there it is. Whoa, there we go. Okay. I have no idea how I'm even going to hold this camera or this phone while watching. So I guess I'll just read first. <gasps> what just happened? Okay, there we go. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Janet. Hi, Judy. Hi, Lacey. Hi, June. Yeah, he saw that earlier, Vicki. Okay, so today's project, let's see if I can't get this moved a little. Put my mouse, I have no idea where. <laughs> I see another one. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Shelly. So remember when I showed you guys that I made this, I was like testing something. It's just a little kid size quilt. It's like a 38 by uh, 58. It's, it's skinny and long, but it actually fits on a crib mattress or toddler bed mattress quite well, size wise. So it's the perfect size for a child or toddler, or it's the perfect size for, I don't know, somebody who's in the hospital and just wants to have a quilt, a small one to drag around with them everywhere, or somebody that just needs the comfort or a kid to drag around the house, whatever. So it's, it's the perfect small size. So I decided it's been a long time since you guys have watched me actually sit at the machine and do any quilting besides making a purse that didn't count so i decided to throw the walking foot on i spray basted this thing because well that's what i do it's hard to, for me pin basting i always end up with too many wrinkles so i spray basted it and made it really nice and smooth so it is spray basted and i'm going to quilt it with the walking foot first and then if i feel up to it maybe i'll throw some free motion quilting in afterwards so all right let's see hi carol so don't forget if you are new to my channel totally forgot that in the beginning head down there hit that subscribe button ring that bell get notifications when i'm live like my videos and share away guys um so yeah i'm gonna start quilting this as soon as i find a place to put this mouse <laughs> because it needs to go somewhere out of my way i'll just stick it right there so you guys see Totally different angle. Um, you're up close. And the window's open and I can hear cars, so kind of distracting in a way. I'm gonna start by reading my phone real quick. Okay. I had computer problems, that's why I'm not on exactly at five. I couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. So I just restarted the whole computer by turning it off and turning it back on. And bam, it worked. So, hi, Sue Ann. All right. First time catching me live. Well, I know that you've been around watching my videos. Well, every Sunday, sometime around 5, Arizona time, because we don't change time like you guys, I come on and do my live stream. So just remember that every Sunday, unless... I post a video saying otherwise or on the Facebook group saying otherwise because some I have done that twice now. All right. Uh, so hard to read these and I'm going to start doing this. So I say hi to Judy. I said hi to Judy. Yes. Okay. So Judy said minus 20 C tonight. I need to get quilting. Minus 20 Celsius. So what's that? Like zero degrees? That's like freezing cold. No, no way. No way. Okay. 
So I'm going to start by, I tested my stitches. This has the back is pink with little strawberries and flowers on it. I know you guys can't see that very well, but so I decided to roll some pink bobbins. I'm using white in the top and pink on the bob bottom, but it's not a very dark pink. It's it If it's next to this white, see, it reads light. So it just makes it look a little bit cleaner. I'm going to start by, hi, Teresa. I'm going to start by moving this somewhat to the middle. And I'm going to do my first couple stitches sort of in the middle. So I'm just going to roll it. And if you hear kids screaming, that is because they are outside this window and playing outside. <laughs> so I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to use my walking foot on this project, and I'm going to stitch a straight line on each side of my seam. And I'm going to use the walking foot because both sides of it are equal. I'm going to use the walking foot uh, as the guide to stay on each side of the seam, if that makes any sense. So I'm just going to start quilting this and we could chit chat and I'll probably have to stop a bazillion times. Hi, Sandy. Just so that I can read the phone because I can't really read the computer screen that well. <laughs> so let's get to this. So I'm going to start by, I'm just going to put a tiny back stitch. I changed the stitch length on my machine to a three. So it's a little bit wider of a stitch purposely because I kind of like the look of 10 stitches per inch or more or less I mean 12 and under usually stitches per inch but I like the look of 10 stitches per inch or less in the quilting if that makes any sense I think it looks clean that way unless I'm like custom quilting then I change it to a tighter stitch so that way it gets points and so on and so forth so so I'm just gonna go ahead and start quilting guys I'm just gonna roll the set on the side and just hold it and it's pretty flat i spray basted it like i said so it's a pretty flat project and this walking foot is super loud when i use it so and if you hear banging again like i said it's the kids get away from the window yep that's kids banging on stuff hi baby, hi, baby. If he's working, you gotta be quiet. So how is everybody doing today? Anybody getting any sewing done on a Sunday? Ooh, that looks so clean. I like the look of this. So I'm just going to do all this side first of everything, of the lines, and then I'm going to flip it around and do the opposite sides. So I'm just going to start with this side of the seam every time on this side, and then I'll do the other side, so on and so forth, all the way down both ways. And I'm holding it with my hands. This is what you got to do when you're walking foot because sometimes with a walking foot it will just adjust and shift things and get it all funky and you'll have folds and pleats and you don't want any of that so i'm holding it as i go kind of just pushing it through the machine without really pushing if that makes any sense for those that are beginners and haven't um mastered the technique of free motion quilting and all you do is use a walking foot then this is how you do it. And like I said, it's not that far of a distance right here. It's 38 inches, like I said. Since I'm fairly new to our channel, are the kiddos your nieces or other family? They are like my nieces. Um, they've been with... I. I was a daycare owner for t almost 22 years, and I gave up daycare and decided a couple years ago, that technically, gosh, she's four and a half now, so four years ago, four years ago, I said, I don't want no more kids here. I'll take drop-ins, blah, 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 blah. Well, um, Triana, the older one, she's four, she came here when she was three months old, and I had other kids too, but they started growing up and going to school and blah, blah, blah. So I kept telling Scott, let's just keep 
less and less kids, I started getting rid of all my daycare supplies, everything stopped, you know, being legal with the city and with the state and so on and so forth. I just kind of gave it all up. But then mama, the baby's, the kids' mom got pregnant again and Sasha was born and she came to us at two weeks old and has been with us since and she's two and a half. So um, they're like family. Like I love them to death. These girls are like my nieces. So I claim them as my nieces and Scott does too. So we love them to death and we don't mind having them here. And obviously they'll still be here growing up and that'll work perfect. So they're like my nieces. And if you see them around, it's because mama said it was okay after a while for them to be on camera. So <laughs> they're, they're on camera every once in a while. Triana loves to be on camera. She loves quilting. So yeah, that's the story. <laughs> Uh, I need to get going after this. I have 13 little chair quilts to make and five adult bibs plus one fleece blanket. Wow, you got a lot to do, Lacey. It's a lot. Need to be done with them all by Monday. You're going to get it all done by as of tomorrow, Monday? Yikes. Mm. I haven't had much time to sew since my in-laws moved into assisted living in our city, but I finally got a chance to catch me. Well, good thing, Janet. Um, so when I ran a daycare for for two for daycare two for years. Ugh, I can't even read. Hard to believe they're all grown up now. Yeah. Oh, and some of the ones I've watched when they a long time ago are grown up now. And it's like, wow. <laughs> I was your age once when I started watching you. <laughs> um. Kids can never have too many people around them to care and love. Exactly. You meant next month. Okay, well, at least you have some time to get it all done. That's a lot of work. And letting you guys know, I did spray base. Like I said, I have no pins in here whatsoever. So I don't have to worry about trying to remove pins as I go. I, I kind of do my thing with the whole spray base thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, they're, uh, let me turn the camera so you guys can see. I kind of moved them around because I hung a second blanket. So all the birthday blocks are there. There's light in the way. And Dewana, if you come on and watch this video now or later, I turned your blocks into blocks if you can't see them. So just so you know, I sewed them together. Um, all the little squares that Dewana sent. Uh, that block, that block, that block, and I made five total blocks from them. Where did they go? One, two, three, oh, four is up there, and five right here. Okay, so yeah, I made her little squares into five blocks that it was exact, so, and then I used a little bit of my fabric to go around them. Okay, so yeah. That's all the, that's all the uh, blocks up there. Mm, da, 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 da. Uh, what kind of batting are you using? I am using scrap batting. Um, this is leftover from the project that you guys just saw in this morning's posted video. Um, this is the leftover batting from that. <laughs> it's a three quarter inch. That's why it looks really thick. It's a three quarter inch um, poly blend. Uh, cotton poly. Uh, I should be mailing mine after this week. Okay, Janet. I look forward to it. Make sure, make sure you saw mine and no one else's when the light goes out. I can't tell once. I have to wait till it's dark to do that. And then you know what, Lacey? I actually have glow in the dark thread out uh, in my pile of long arm thread out there. I have yet to use it. So I'm going to have to run it through the machine and see if the long arm likes it. If not, it's got to come in here and be used. <laughs> you wouldn't think that these little quilts would be heavy, but with all this fabric and the really thick batting, it's pretty darn heavy. And I like literally 
I don't know, in some spaces, if you can't tell, you don't even see batting sticking out. That is because it's barely there. So I'll probably have to trim like a quarter inch or so away from the edge all the way around. I didn't really have enough batting, but I had enough batting, if that makes any sense. So mostly enough. <laughs> I'm making it work. Didn't see your block. It's up there, Sandy. It's right here on the edge. Here, I'll turn the camera one more time. It is right there. Uh, right there at the end. And Lacey's, yours was right there. And I could name everybody's, but just letting you know that's where they are. Just in case you ask. Oh, my hips just keep popping over and over. It's getting so annoying. Glow in the dark hood is perfect for Halloween clothes. Well, I don't actually... I have fabric that is holiday fabric. Because when I was when my mom was here, I was trying to find a project I started. So while we were outside during nap time one day, I'm digging through all my tubs and my mom is helping me. And I'm going to talk while sewing. And I'm looking and looking and looking. I cannot find this project that I started. It's tumbling blocks. I started a long time ago, blues and orange. Um, I cannot find it for the life of me. I don't know where it is. I started it like four years ago in the beginning and I had no idea what I was doing and I was doing it with Y seams. Well, last night I did a little Y seam block. I posted it on the thing. Um, the grandmother's flower garden with all Y seams proving to Alexa that it can be done. It just takes a long time. Well, in the process of while I was out in the garage that day, when my mom was here, I could not find it, but guess what I did find all of my Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving type, you know, seasonal fabrics in a tub out there. <laughs> now you guys know I really don't use seasonal. It's actually in a tub in the garage. Well, I separated the tub. I put it down under the long arm so that I can go out there and grab it all. So great idea, Lacey, to do with the glow in the dark fabric. I could make a Halloween. I have some Halloween fabrics that Michelle gave me and that I got from, um, I think I got it from the thrift store, actually, the green one. But yeah, I have some, so maybe I could put together some kind of Halloween something next year, but I really don't make seasonal quilts. I just make quilts. If it turns out seasonal because of the fabric line, then it turns out seasonal, but I'm not really, I don't know. I don't make ghosts and goblins for Halloween, and I don't make Christmas tree blocks for Christmas, you know? I don't know. It's nothing against the holidays. It's just, I like making random, you know? I like doing my own thing. And I have fun with it as well. Feeling, I have been feeling like poo-poo. <laughs> my hips are killing me. I took a med yesterday that the doctor prescribed me, and holy moly, it screwed with my brain. I was up all night, and I've been up all day. I don't know what the heck is wrong when I take medicines, but it was an anti-fatigue medicine. And it definitely anti-fatigued me because there is no tiredness. But my body's tired. My brain is going crazy. It's like the opposite for me. Any kind of SSRI medications, like, screw with my brain immensely. Like, I don't even think that's a word I can even use. They really mess with me. So I got to tell the doctor what happened and how it made me feel and that I don't want to take it again because I got dizzy and nauseous and just felt like poop all day yesterday and most of today. Other than that, my hips hurt. My legs have been sore, but that's an everyday thing having MS. just didn't see it and I thought maybe you hadn't got it yet. I'm glad you did. You didn't see the video, Sandy? I opened it all in uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, and he's got glow-in-the-dark fingernail polish. I actually have some glow-in-the-dark fingernail polish too. Nice. I need to get some. I have GID embroidery floss, GID fabric paint, GID glitter, and thread. Ooh. Yes, get glow-in-the-dark everything. 
I actually have some glow in the dark um, Star Wars fabric. And I don't even watch Star Wars. It's just to have for the. It was on sale, and if I need to make a customer quote that wants Star Wars, well, I have the fabric. The glow in the dark stuff. I have no idea what's happening there. Oh, there we go. I got stuck under the walking foot. Is this like super loud? Like sounds like a machine gun for you guys? Because <laughs> it is for me. It's weird how much louder the walking foot is to have attached to the machine than using a regular foot. Hi, Debbie. Debbie says, I haven't been able to watch some of your videos. I've been busy, and if you don't know, my best friend Bullet died. Oh, your dog. Yeah, I saw that. Sorry for your loss, Sandy. It sucks when we lose our pets. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Who is the quote for? This is for I don't know. It's probably just going to go in a pile of the big, huge pile that I have. Because if you guys didn't know, I have a big, huge pile of for sale quilts, and I don't know. I don't know. Scott and I were talking. Maybe next Sunday I'll have a decision about a couple things, but we'll see. We'll see. It's for nothing right now. It's just a quilt that is going to be a quilt. <laughs> just to sit around and look nice. Just trying to find a new one. Cadence is in my lap and she's saying hello and throwing. Oh, how cute. Hello, Cadence. I know how you feel, Sandy. I've been having to do the last two months or so. All right. And by the way, I'm using pink thread on the bottom if I didn't say it. Again. Because the back of this is pink. It's pink with uh, strawberries and flowers. And it looks good with the front, so... And I'll probably use, you know, just because I'll probably use all what I cut off as the binding. <laughs> because this was all I had of this fabric anyway. Super since mom died and it really hurts like I can't get myself back together. You hurt all, all over all the time. Well, just sit and sew and... Get some quilting done and try to recoup yourself. Because you could still be sad and depressed while quilting, but it brings you back to that normal. All I want to do is sit down. That's all I want to do, for, for different reasons. And I'm sorry. I'm going to sew this edge down, and then I'm going to start going the opposite way on the other side. And I'm using my hand to keep it nice and tight as it runs through. I think it looks really cute with just the just straight stitching and I'm not even gonna free motion quilt it. You might not have to. Okay. I did a test stitch on here to make sure that my tension was okay because sometimes with this walking foot it gets really messed up. So I do need to pick this out because it's gonna start puckering right here. 
just a quick test stitch. And yes, you can pick while quilting if you have to. If something doesn't line up and you need to adjust it, just pick it out and start from the beginning and or adjust it and then keep going, which is what I'm doing. <clears throat> The only thing I hate really about what I'm doing now, this whole spray basting and sit down quilting, is the smell of the spray base. Any kind of spray base has a funky smell. And I told you guys a bazillion times, I don't do smells. Everything affects me. Perfumes, colognes, deodorants. I can't stand the smell of any of that kind of stuff at all. It really, really, really screws with me. So that's one thing I don't like about sit down quilting like this. So if you're sensitive to smells, don't spray base. I spray base because it's easier. So, so far there's one line on each side. And you can see that. I'm still going to stitch a second one on the opposite side now of the seam. But first I'm going to do the one line on each side going this way. So that the quilt shifts equally. If that makes any sense. So I'm going to slide this under, roll it to where I need to be, and start stitching. Hi, Linda. Uh, hold on. Where, 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 where are we at? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Hold on. Been a lot of talk so far. Okay, I know how you feel. I think it's too close. One moment. Okay, I want to sleep. It will get better soon enough, although we don't think we'll be right again. I thought like that when it was for your dad. Um, I'm doing a quilt as you go right now, and it is really helping, but I still want to sleep. <laughs> maybe you're just tired. If it's helping and you still feel tired, maybe you just, you're just tired, Sandy. Sandy sewing really helps with all the things that life makes us sad, along with lots of prayers and good friends as well. Yes, having friends and family around helps a lot has been really helping and I appreciate everyone that does for me. Sounds like depression is trying to set in. I sure pray that it doesn't. Yes, Chrissy, good friends. Um, hi, Linda. Did I just say that? I probably did. I have to agree. Depression is trying, but I'm fighting it. Hi, Linda. Um, Mom couldn't stand the smell of perfume, candles, or anything. Yeah, I can't stand any of it. Um, my daughter liked uh, um, incense. And they would burn it and I could smell and oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. can't stand it. Okay. All right. Back to what I was doing. Oops. Okay. So now I'm just going to run this other side on all of these. And I think before I do the opposite side, I'm going to go up and down as well. I'm trying to keep everything nice and flat. Daughter lives close. Is that correct? But my kids all live scattered throughout town. They all live in town. One lives here, Cyrus. Alexa lives far that way. Maxine lives far that way. And Damon lives far that way. <laughs> but our town isn't really big. So it is like literally 10 minutes for one to get here about seven for the other, and about 15 for another. 
because she's a little bit far. She's out of town, like dirt roads type out of town. But yeah, I like that too. Just makes it hard though on big areas. So like something like this would be easy, but if you're trying to do a queen size quilt and you want to cross hatch, you just have to mark everything just right. So, what's everyone have plans for this week? Tomorrow is Veterans Day. I think. Is it Veterans Day? Yeah, it's Veterans Day. I had to think about that one for a second. <laughs> we usually go to the parade on Veterans Day. There's a parade in town. Does anybody else do anything on Veterans Day? Go hang out at the, um, I guess, old folks' homes, I guess is what it's called, and hang out with uh, veterans and, and do something special like barbecues or things like that. Cross-hatching is your favorite for Sue, sleep. Now that I know Monday is Veterans Day, yes, you're right. I did a lot of that. You talk about a lot of work. That's why I got long arm. Yeah, exactly. That's why I got one too. The only thing about cross hatching, though, on a long arm is the starts and stops because the throat space is only so big. And if you want to cross hatch a whole entire quilt, well, you're going to start and stop a lot. So you have to have a direction and a plan as you're going. Well, with any quilt, you need it, but on a long arm, especially, unless it's a computerized thing that hooks that next line to that next line, that would probably be the only way it comes out 100% correct and accurate every time. <laughs> um, Although I've cross-hatched a lot of borders. It's, it's fun doing that. And you guys have seen that. Um, sewing this week on a log cabin quilt that you're making for your hubby. Ooh, fun, Sue Ann. Are you in the group? Don't forget, if you guys are new to my channel, there is in the description below a link to the Facebook group. Join that Facebook group. It's for all of us to share all the things that we do. So you guys share with me and I share with you and blah, 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 blah. And I do share a lot of off-screen stuff and I also share directions and I also share this and I share that and actual clear photos. <laughs> so, and I like when you guys share because it well, it makes me happy to see all the things that you guys do. It makes me feel amazing to see that you guys are having fun just like me. Arthritis test tomorrow. Somebody's burning a fire. Ugh, I hate the smell oh, of fireplace and wood burning chimneys. Blech. Ooh. It's almost time to close that window. <sighs> Someone was burning last night. It smelled like they were burning electrical wires or something. And uh, it really stunk so bad last night. But it's that time of year that we leave the doors and windows open to it for until a certain time of day or night. And then we close it all up because it keeps the house cool and it doesn't get too hot in here. Hi Anna. 
Long time no see. Mail the block to you, but it was nine inches. Then I watched a couple of your videos and realized that it should be nine and a half. I then mailed you a long strip to attach to make it nine and a half. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I actually have, there's quite a few blocks. I guess some people didn't watch a lot of the other videos. So I, there are some blocks that are actually eight and a half in there before I retracted my first video saying eight and a half inch finish eight inch blocks because there was somebody quite a few people said oh i can't find eight inch blocks so i was like okay we'll just change it to nine inch finished blocks and nine and a half inch unfinished so i remade the video some people didn't see it so there are a couple blocks that are either too big or too small so i'm probably going to um st strategically place the ones that are smaller in specific areas if that makes any sense so maybe one row will be all the eight and a half inch blocks so that way the sashing can be adjusted and it will fit perfectly and then some will be anything that's nine and something there's only one block that's bigger than everything so i'll have to worry about the bigger thens but i will figure it out it will go together no matter how it looks because it's from you guys so don't worry about it it's going to be awesome no matter what size they actually end up but i would prefer if they all came about the unfinished from your house at nine and a half but that's just preference for me to not have to struggle putting it together but know that if you messed up it's okay Ooh, what the heck is happening here that was weird Tension is not messed up. It just randomly wasn't stitching. Let's pluck it out. This happens too. Especially if you start off too fast with a walking foot. I'm giving Chance a bath and Brandon is watching you. Okay. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, kiddo. Okay, I'm just picking these stitches out real quick because I don't want to double stitch over them. That was weird. It didn't attach until it was attached, if that makes any sense. It just, and then I got, the thread got stuck and kind of pulled really tight. That happens. That's, a, that's a, a rule with quilting. Expect something to happen because it will. No matter what you do to stop it or prevent it or how good you are, uh, something always happens. It could just be a broken needle to be something that's happened, but stitching, skipping stitches, but skip the whole like four inches in. <laughs> that was weird. And then it finally caught. It's like the needle unthreaded and threaded itself. Weird, right? All right, let's pull all those threads off the back. Okay, now it's nice. Now let's make sure that the, the stitches stay. Working now. If you're younger, thirsty, you need anything? I don't know, I'm good. Did you want any of this? No, I want to make some fresh. Oh, sorry, after six, I'm just going to put these in so I wasn't going to make anything. Okay. Do you want to make something or not? I will when I'm done. How many of you um, quilt like this, just stitch next to the ditch and do it on the whole project and just do every quilt this way? Are there any of you guys out there that do every quilt like this and, and haven't free motion quilted or anything yet? 
or ventured out of your comfort zone, I guess is what it's called. How many of you just do this? And if you're watching after the fact, put it in the comments below. Do you just straight stitch quilt next to the ditch? Or even in the ditch, I guess that's the same thing. Alright, now I'm going to close this side off. Make sure everything's nice and opened up. And I'm going to pick it up because it's kind of long and heavy. And pick it up off the floor. Sew this side. I'm holding it nice and straight. Jim, this is that's the way I do it. So Jim, you put like this. Started that way and branched out a little. So Anna started. I started this way too. And it's weird to go back to it after long arming now for, well, I was mid arming for a while, but long arming now for a year. Like, it's different to come back and just do this only. But it feels easier. Like, this is going to be done so quick. But if I would have thrown it on the long arm, I would have had 15 minutes to load or less. It just depends on how big it is. But we'll just say 15 minutes to load it. And then prep my thread, roll my bobbins, blah, blah, blah. So there's another eight minutes, you know. And then the two hours it would take to custom quilt something specific on here. If I was just doing straight lines, it would have been 20 minutes done. But, you know, because I quilt kind of quick. But... This actually seems like it's, it's more personal and it takes more whatever, but I do custom quilting, so that's just as personal, I guess, if you think about it. But this way, just I get to sit because my hips hurt. <laughs> Plus, I just pulled a quilt off the frame and I'm like, I really don't really want to load another one right now. Plus, I don't have no backing. I pulled out a quilt. Um, the one that I just did in a video, like, I don't know, three weeks ago, an insomniac quilt. I pulled that out and I forgot that I made that really big. It's uh, 82 by 90. No, seven. Yeah, it was 82 by 90 or something like that. I'm looking through all of my fabric and going, I don't even have, I need at least eight and a half yards to back it. Oh, looking through everything. And I cannot find, unless I use a solid, I don't have that much yardage. So I'm going to have to wait till I get some 108. <laughs> I told Scott, I think I'm going to have to go shopping for 108 fabric. He says, not right now. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to turn this whole thing that, I'll, that I've done every single one. And I'm going to go with the opposite sides now. So I'm going to kind of just put it back in the middle again. Um, and then... I haven't ventured out to do free motion quilting. I still do straight line, but I have hopes that I will learn free motion quilting. Practice, practice, practice <laughs> is what they say. Yes, exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I would say, Linda, or anybody out there, if you really, really, really want to venture out into it, scrap fabric. Just take scrap fabric, make pot holders pot holders make a lot of pot holders because it's a small project you get used to what where and how it's going to sit you have enough you know like a 10 inch square just use a 10 inch square you have enough for your hands to sit on so you can get used to the motion you also get that the corner feeling so when you when you're at a corner of a quilt so being able to have it open like that you get used to where your hands can and can't go. And if you're used to, you know what I mean? You, you'd know where to stop, especially using the free motion quilt because I've sewn over my fingers, so I know. You get used to it. So start with something really small, even if it's just like a, say, 20 by 30 baby, uh, little baby quilt thing or something. Start with something super small and just squiggle lines. Then go to a squiggle and then a swirl in it and then squiggle. And then go to squiggle, double swirl, 
squiggle. You know what I mean? Just one thing after the other until you get used to how your hands sit, how your hands are going to move, how close you can are comfortable with your fingers coming while you're holding it and get used to all those things. So I had to get used to a lot of, because I have the shakes. I don't know if you guys know this. I shake a lot. And I mean, it's probably harder to see over video, but I shake a lot. And when I first started, if I didn't hold all of my fingers down, like really they, they shook and they'd get closer and closer to the needle and it's like up, back away. And I, I got, I scare myself out of it, you know? So I would just say practice, but use small things. Don't, don't waste your big projects on what you don't know what you're doing yet. Just start with little things. I mean, pot holder, who can't have enough pot holders or just hang them on the wall or make a book of the designs that you're learning. So you can go back and remember, this is how this is done, you know, or whatever. So try things like that. Um, Jim did do one cross hatch. Loads of fun. It is fun, Jim. Definitely. Uh, Vicky Tuesday gets fitted for her new glasses and then she can see to sew. Yay, Vicky! I'm so happy that you're going to have glasses and you can see not only to sew, but anything, right? You'll be able to drive and stuff again. Um, uh, pot holders are nothing but mini quilts. Yep, exactly. Yay, Vicky, way to go. Hi, Billy. I can do meander and loopy loops. <laughs> That's about all you've tried so far. Those are pretty simple to do, meander and loopy loops. I actually, those are my go-to things on quilts because it's simple, easy, and 100% loved by everybody, no matter how I do it. Um, and it fits with any quilt. So that's a positive for that. But yeah, I do meander and loop de loops all the time on the long arm. I mean, I can do anything and be creative, but sometimes some quilts just don't need anything but some quick quilting all over it and loop de loops and meander is the easiest. <laughs> or flowers. I do a lot of flowers. If a quilt has flowers in the fabric, I'll actually quilt flowers in the quilt. If it has swirlies, I'll do some swirls. If it has paisleys, I quilt an edged edge paisley design. Not thick, not tight. They're just one line and then a paisley off that line. And instead of loop de looping, I just, instead of the loop, I would go into a paisley, come out, double it real quick, and then come out and do more. You know what I mean? Over and over, all off of lines. It's actually quite fun and it's definitely pleasing to the eye to look at and it fits a lot of different quilts i need to start venturing into other quilting like more than just feathers more than just whatever and some ruler work but i don't have those kind of projects where i just want to throw them on the long arm and screw with it to learn uh, um i've used a lot of my good fabric to practice on and I have lots of practice fabric and stuff that I can use but I don't want to waste the thread it's expensive <laughs> so I kind of just do quilts and sometimes I'll go okay I think I saw how this is done I can do this and then I do it so I want to put extra batting behind Dresden plates, so do I got to cut and sew them like the plates? Yeah, you can do it like that, or you can just cut a circle. Uh, however big your Dresden is, the, the circular part of things, with the, you know, not counting the inner part of the points, but from the outer part of the points all the way around, measure that distance, and then cut out some batting and place it in under that. And make sure it stays. But that's actually called trapunto work. So if you're going to quilt in between each Dresden, you know, and put lots of nice fancy lines in your Dresden like that, and you're bringing that all forward to where it puffs forward, that's actually trapuntoing your quilt. So just thought you might want to know that. It's mainly done to take one really densely quilted area and one lightly dense and one lightly quilted area and cause a poppage if that makes any sense but yeah just cut a circle it's no big deal The 
should go a lot easier now because each side is one side is already stitched. Yeah, I should have done that with my Dresdens, but I didn't. I quilted it on the frame, but it still looks good because I used three quarter inch batting, so it didn't really matter. And I did heavy quilting outside of the Dresdens and light quilting inside the Dresdens. So it looks cool. They pop. And always make sure when you're quilting projects like this, not to have this folded under while you're sewing. You know how many times I've actually done that in the beginning? A lot. So make sure your backing and stuff is nicely out of the way. And don't have too much of it hanging. You only need a little bit. Two to four inches all the way around is good. I have a lot hanging because I had to adjust this quilt top onto the batting because <laughs> my batting wasn't exactly the right size. this machine is loudly obnoxious when the um, walking foot is on here there's something calming about doing this like soothing calming besides the fact that I have to keep lifting it up because it keeps falling off the table So they better take care of it. Yeah, they better. I've not had a problem with anybody getting quilts that I've made taking care of it or not loving them either. And anybody that's ever gotten a gifted quilt has loved their quilt just as much. So I guess some people, I know I've read it a lot in groups on Facebook that people have gifted quilts and their uh, giftee was not excited. They weren't. Uh, in love with it, they could care less, and they don't use it, and it ended up at a thrift store. So there are people out there that they're not in, into quilts like we are, and some people just don't find, they'd rather just go get a comforter and be happy with it because they can make their bedroom look the same as it with a quilt. The quilt has to be made to m match something else, you know, or whatever. So just be careful when you're gifting quilts, guys. <laughs> You want it to be appreciated. All the hard work you put into it. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, I don't remember how I even pieced this. I know it was a fat quarter bundle, but I don't remember what I was doing. I think I made strips and subcut them. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go back and look in my own videos. And I'm not really pulling much. I'm just keeping one hand flat and the other one's kind of just giving a little tug. If that looks funny, I know a lot of quilters do that. It's like you're trying to rush it to get it done faster, but you're really not pulling. It's like keeping it straight again, flattening everything out. How did you make that quilt up? 
you know what? It's like, I don't know, like five weeks or six weeks ago. I honestly do not remember. <laughs> um, that's why I said I have, might have to go look back at my own videos because I actually don't remember. I don't remember how I pieced it or anything. I just know that it looks like I strip pieced, but the colors go one, two, three, four from a different color, and then they go one, two, three, four from a different color. So I must have swapped colors or something. <sighs> I don't know. I just know that this was fat quarters because I had two different kinds of fat quarters. I don't that I did something. So I don't remember when I made it though. Unfortunately, you based it with, uh, it, let's see if it's right here still. I just get basting spray, Dritz, Dritz basting spray. And let me tell you guys, this stuff stinks. Any, the 505 that I've bought, it stinks. There was another one that I brought, some off-brand craft something um, spray, and it's stinks. Oh my God, that was the worst. I never bought that ever again. Um, this one is like $8 at Walmart, but this can. And I am glad I long arm because I went through, I would probably have to say in the beginning, like 75 of these cans and at almost $10 a can, that's a lot of money. I am, I should be, I should have pinned in the beginning, but it was every time I pinned, I had issues. So I started doing the basting spray and then I just did it out in the garage because I started quilting in the garage. So it was okay out there because I can make the fans blow the smell away. But in here, mm -mm -mm. if you have to be in the house to use this stuff, you do not want to smell it. It stinks. It stinks so bad. So yeah, that's the kind that I buy, but I've had that can for probably, I don't know, a year <laughs> because I don't. I don't spray race projects anymore, you know? <coughs> uh, got to get husband well so I can sew again. Oh, yeah, you better do that, Billy. Get your husband nice and healthy. So if you're spending all your time with him and you can't do the things that you love, it kind of, it can kind of depress someone, like, a lot. You don't need that. Hi, Brenda. Mm, I got a spray and it's hard to wash out, so I'm not using it no more. I've never had a problem. This stuff, oh, I don't have anything that's not stitched down anymore, but this stuff, it comes right off if you, if you have to readjust and it doesn't get stuck really bad. But it also depends on what kind of batting you're using. 100% cotton battings, the 100% cotton battings and spray based don't do well with readjusting, tearing it and then readjusting it because that cotton just comes right apart. Um, the poly, uh, the poly blends, the 80, 20 poly cotton blends or 60, 40 poly cotton blend battings. I found they come apart easier, but they need to be, um, I guess it's called heat stamped or something like that, where one side, one side of the batting, that's what this is. It's the 80-20. One side of the batting is really smooth. The other side is rough. So maybe it's needle punched. I don't remember what it's called. But it's like that for a reason. And when it, there's spray based on it, see, it doesn't stick. This came apart. And I can readjust. And it's not really heavily sticky. This kind, at least this brand. Um, but yeah, it, it works just fine. I've never had a problem with it. I, the only thing that gets sticky if I spray it near the carpet and it gets on the carpet, then my feet get covered in it and then I drag thread everywhere. <laughs> Other than that, I've never had a problem with this brand besides the stench. And it should wash out. It's supposed to wash out. All spray bases are supposed to wash out once they go through the washer. Oh, okay, so that's gonna be it's gonna get stickier because of it. At least that I've noticed. I don't know how other people the issues other people have, but I know that I had a lot of issues with using 100% cotton batting with the um, spray base. I have lots of it, and I don't know the weight wise. 
Um, 100% cotton is really, really, really lightweight for a quilt, and they don't make it really thick. Um, it's like not even an eighth, of, an eighth of an inch thick. It's like a sixteenth of an inch thick, which is like literally like that. That's uh, another reason why I don't like using cotton unless somebody wants it in their quilt. I don't buy 100% cotton batting just to buy it. I have it, but I don't. There's, it's rare that I use it. I use poly blends because they have more loft. They get the results I like personally. And when I gift it to someone, they don't know the difference. So only we know. So if they don't know the difference, then it's okay. Like the big, huge Mariner Star Quilt that was purchased that I did. Um, that one has 100% polyester. And it had batting that was this thick in it. I mean, if you guys watched the video on Facebook, I put that together with batting that thick. Uh, it was really, really thick. And it got beautiful results. And it was polyester. So it's, if I would have quilted that big, huge quilt with cotton, the quilt would have been lighter, sort of, because it is a big quilt. But it would have been lighter, a lot lighter, probably at least half a pound or more lighter. And it would have been, there wouldn't have been puffiness. There wouldn't have been, I don't know, the quilting would have just looked black. I like, woohoo, look at that, you know. I don't like black. <laughs> so just, you know, it depends on what you guys like and what where you guys live. Cotton is going to be warmer. Wool is going to be warmer. Polyester is going to be even more warmer, if that makes any sense. So cotton's a little bit more breathable. Polyester is going to be... Woo um, semen. So if you're living somewhere that's freezing cold and it's like 20 degrees outside and 45 degrees in your house because the heater just can't keep up, you're going to want polyester batting. Just side note. You could also mix too. You can put two different battings in one quilt. Just letting you guys know. I've done that before. And wool is for, I don't use wool. I've only used wool once living here because nobody around here wants wool in their quilt. Not in Arizona. <laughs> it's even hotter. It's like lightweight, but it's hot. I find most overspray a little goes a long way. Yes. A little does go a long way. Cotton, yeah, okay. Um, I like the cotton batting and threads. Can't touch wool. Don't touch wool if you can't touch it. Is it because it feels funky or are you allergic? My thing is saying that uh, Quilting Cowboy has posted a video. <clears throat> I don't know where my mouse oh there it is i put it up there to get rid of these stupid thingies on my screen break out in high so you're allergic can't stand them little red bumps from that wool. Yeah. I think wool is scratchy, but once it's in a quilt, it's different. Like, way different. But I've only used it once. I had really nice results, but it wasn't as lofty as I like. But it still was nice, but it was really not my thing. I wouldn't have laid under it. Hi, Aunt B. Haven't seen you in a while. Although when I say a while, sometimes you guys are here on Sundays, and then I don't remember the next Sunday who was here the Sunday before, and I'm like... I don't remember things. That's why I have you guys writing your names on your blocks that you send for my birthday blocks because uh, I don't remember. I have that horrible of a memory. I remember little things and I remember quilting related things. Of course, blocks aren't because I, 
I don't remember because I didn't make it, if that makes any sense. But I just sewed all that with no bobbin. That happens too, guys. Not using as many as I rolled. I rolled five just in case. Holy moly, my phone is going crazy. Talk to my dog, won't let me. <laughs> Can't touch it even after interval. Oh, that's crazy. I'm working on quilted Christmas stockings. Fun. I'm just working on this. Something you guys never see me do anymore is sit down and quilt <laughs> with straight lines and a walking foot. But I'm making it work. Oh, where's you at? There it is. So we'll start about right here. I'm going to do a back stitch. There we go. I'm going to clip that away. Or else I won't remember that it's there. I'll see it when I'm done. Need to have some kind of tone when Bob. It, well, you know, on my long arm, and I still don't have how to don't know how to make the fe feature on it work. Okay, so it runs off of a tablet. The tablet has lots of like setting things, you know, and I can change my stitch length and so on. It's not computerized, but it just has a tablet to tell it what to do. And uh it has a bobbin alarm. I entered in the numbers that the book says to, which is the standard full bobbin number. And I entered it in and nothing happened. So I waited till the next bobbin. I pressed the enter button, turned it on, blah, blah, blah. I waited and I ran out of bobbin again. Nothing went ding, ding, ding. You're out of bobbin. Then I did it again. And finally it dinged. It dinged when I wasn't even halfway through. I was like not even a quarter. It was barely a quarter way use the bobbin, you know. I guess people don't use because it, it dinged at the number it said. It's like 340 something or whatever the number was. It was like three something. And I go back to the settings and look and I've got a quarter of this bobbin used. And why did it run out? The book tells you not to overfill your bobbins, blah, blah, blah. It says all sorts. It has all sorts of stuff. It wasn't overfilled. It just was filled nicely, you know. Uh, yeah. So they suspect that normal people only fill a bobbin a quarter of the way to long arm, but it uses one whole bobbin in one pass. If you're heavily quilting, one bobbin is one pass across a queen or king size quilt. So this setting thing, so I have to figure out what, the number is for what I'm using when I roll up my bobbin. I don't know how to know that. And the book doesn't tell me either. So I just have to keep playing with it. I haven't done it since I got my new screen, but yeah, I have to I guess play with it and find that right number. Cause it will ding when my bobbin is low <laughs> telling me that it's going to run out right now. My, my thing is I know that one row of heavy quilting is one bobbin and three rows on a little quilt like this size three solid passes across, then I'll run out of bobbin. But I it's just because I'm used to it. But there is an alarm. These machines should come with one, though. I'm pretty sure, like, the fancy screen machines, like embroidery machines and stuff like that. Teresa, you're on, right? Do you, Does your embroidery machine have a, a ding, ding, ding when your bobbin is low? Or is it not that sophisticated yet? I mean, my other one doesn't even have that. My brother. And that's computerized. This is not computerized. Yet. Tip for a bird day, D day block. Could you make that flower garden block? Oh, for, for any of you who are wondering, I posted this in the group. I'll show you right now. Okay, so most people know that Grandmother's Flower Garden is an English paper piece project, but sewing by hand and machine was around before English paper piecing anyway. I can sew, I, I don't have a, um, I have a template, but it's too big. 
I don't have a little template to make these, and I'm pretty sure I have one in my book for the hexes. So I kind of just made hexes by what my brain knows. So I made hexes, and I can sew them together, but it's all Y seam. So Vicky wants to know if I can make a video to show you guys how to. I could probably make a whole block with just hexes, and these are like two and a quarter inch pieces of how to connect just hexes in a block. So yeah, I can teach that, but it has to be a couple days from now because I can't do it right now. But yeah, I, um, I'm i going to have to find one of my books with a template in it so I can get the actual two and a half inch template or whatever for these. But I know how to sew them. See how the back is? With all Y seams, it's very small stitching and I'll have to record it by camera and then upload it because there's no way you guys are going to see how I'm stitching from over here, you know what I mean, or your normal angle up there. So I will try my best in the next couple days to make another little thing, but I have to find the template to get accurate pieces to make an accurate block, but I'll attempt it, okay? So yeah, I made that uh, last night as a little side challenge from my daughter. She was curious about it because she saw the grandmother's flower garden at the quilt show and was curious how it's done. And she was looking them up online. She says, Mom, these are hand sew. I said, no, you could sew this by machine. I'm telling you, you could sew it by machine. She didn't know. And she was wondering how long it would take to make a big quilt that way. And I was like, yeah, that's like a month's worth of work if you're constantly at it every single day. So I made just little, one little piece just to show her how it's put together and how you fold one piece to the other piece. It's, it's a little on the confusing side if you don't know what you're doing. But I can show you guys how to do that. It, like I said, it'd have to be a regular video when I have time to record. Uh, live is, I have time to do live. I know somebody has asked me this before. I have time to do live. I also have the time that I could have been doing the live stream talking to you guys to record a video and then wait till the middle of the night to upload it because I can't upload during the day. So for those of you who are wondering why I don't post so many videos, it's because I have to record those when I can. Live is easier, just press a button and go. Secondarily to that, when I upload a video, even though they're like an hour long, even a 15, if I was just to make a 15 minute how-to video, it will take from say, 1130 is when we go to bed and everybody stops using internet in the house. It'll take from 1130 at night until seven o'clock in the morning to upload that 15 minute video. So nobody has internet. So I can't be an insomniac with no internet. So that's why I do live stream. I don't take any of the internet when I'm live streaming. So one TV can still be on in the house. Whereas opposed to uploading a video Nobody can watch TV. Nobody can do anything. So just thought I'd let you guys know that. That's why I don't make as many videos and you get live stream. Until I can have a thousand subscribers, I can live stream from my phone and actually just hold this here and show you guys things. So share my videos. Let's get me to a thousand or at least a little bit above a thousand so I have wiggle room so that I can live stream from any device again. And then you guys could have like front row live stream access to, to what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> I can take it anywhere, and I have a little tripods. I have little tripod thingies, and a little hold. My holder broke, but I need another holder. I have holders, and I can just stick it right here, and everything can be done right in front of your guys' very own eyes. And you can ask questions while. That's what I like about live. That's why I watch a lot of live streams because I can ask questions while I'm there. Yeah. Hi, Diane. Hi, Lori. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, please, please, please. Yep, okay. Janice says, if I wind a bobbin with light, it holds 160 pre-wound manga bobbins hold like 200 and self-wound. Magnifico holds about 120. So you have that on your long arm too, Janet, the pre the bobbin winding thing. I don't use pre-wound. I wind my own, but I never know the number to enter in. I use my bobbin alarm, but it recognizes when you take take thread to break thread. Interesting. I didn't know that. 
just like the lady in that video made. Lori said, hi, Tiffany, how are you? I'm good, Lori. I'm just in pain, but I'm I'm happy and energetic because I'm on medication that still is not out of my system, making my brain go a miles an hour. <laughs> my body, on the other hand, isn't. And I'm super shaky. It, it has not eased up. Hi, Linda. I uh, didn't see what quote you're working on. Looks pretty as all your work does. What design? It's just one of my me throwing together stuff that I don't even remember doing. That's what this quilt is. I I did it in a video. I know I did. Just don't remember when and don't remember what I did. I just know that it was fat quarters because these were fat quarter bundles and I had two different ones that I didn't I didn't know what to do with. So I just was like, oh, I'll just make something random out of them. So I know that it's the randomness videos. <clears throat> you put your hexes on wax paper, then turn wax up, then iron it. It sticks. No thread basting. Well, I just sew them together. <laughs> well, I know how to do that. I'll show you guys though. Yes, you prefer self wound? I prefer self wound too because I like to make it. I like to wind my bobbins. This stops at a specific one. On my other, on the long arm, I adjusted it because its original is setting on the the bobbin winder was like barely any thread. Like I said. I don't know why those machines think that they're barely any thread, but I adjusted it to where it puts a lot more thread on it. And I like it that way. So it gives me more bobbin to play with. So I don't have to run out halfway through things because I do a lot of random and I quilt fast. So yeah. What do you guys haven't noticed? doesn't like overwound bobbins. So did I say hi to Linda? I said hi to you, Linda, didn't I? Linda Cooper, Linda Turner. Okay. Hi, Linda. So there's three Lindas in here right now, then. Uh, that's another reason why I wanted you guys to name blocks, because so some of you have all the same names. <laughs> so. Hi, hoo ha I don't know if you guys noticed, but some of 16 minutes of that video I posted this, that came up this morning, that posted this morning, the long arming work on my half and half quilt, CJ recorded that. So the sound is kind of crickly crackly. I think they're going to have to find a different way to hold the camera for that. But did you guys like that, that he, were, you know, walked around while I was, I mean, he need to get better at it, obviously. But did you guys like watching that, that he can move to different angles? I know with following my machine, it kind of vibrates, but on the other one, it doesn't vibrate, but I can only record in portrait mode and I need a clip that holds my phone like this in landscape mode because YouTube uploads better and videos edit better in landscape mode. So if I can get CJ to, you know, do a little bit here and there, I could make more long arming videos with him following me around um you sent uh let's see what high loft batting i don't know the name of the brand i bought it on walmart.com which actually shipped from overstock.com because you know when you go to walmart some things say ship from blah 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 ship from this company that company well it was shipped from overstock.com so far this batting that i bought this last time has got to be the best brand um, I don't remember the name of the brand, but it's loft wise and um, the feel of it, the, the fact that it doesn't fall apart really easily. Um, and yeah, I don't know how, how to more to explain it, but I like this brand so far over any brand that I've ever used now. Sucky part is, is Scott and I cannot find it again. So it's a good thing I have one more big, huge roll of it. <laughs> But I don't know the brand. It's uh, eighty twenty. It's polyester uh, cotton, cotton polyester. Same thing. But it's a three quarter inch loft. Sent your mom back to Havana City yesterday. Knee surgery went well. Okay. Uh, Vicky missed out on a long arm machine bars and all for nine hundred, but didn't have that kind of money. 
Where would you even put it, Vicky? <laughs> If I ever find that batting, the batting again, the, the same brand, um, it was off of Overstock from Walmart. So maybe I can look on Overstock, but it was a 30 yard roll. If we ever find it again, I could share the link in the group it's for everybody that's in the group. This one I like the best of all batting. Although I did like the polyester batting that the Mariner star quilt was made with. That was pretty darn awesome batting. All right, one more strip right here, or strip, one more uh, away from the seam stitch, and then I can go the other way. I'm talking my way through this, guy. at least trying to, because I can talk this not loud. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to turn it this way and go on both sides of each one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have 14 more times of going up and down. And I'm just going to start right here and then come back to the top and start right here and come back to the top. And I'm yanking down here. If you haven't noticed, it's kind of slow. Because it's yanking on me. There we go. I like 8020. That has been needled. They, that's the word I was it's needled. I think it's needle punched, though, Diane. Um, it's how it's read when you read the packaging and you, when you read the, the ad description of batting. <laughs> I don't know why. I like using the blended over 100% cotton because the 100% cotton is so thin. Like, I don't know. Unless it's for little baby quilts and they need cotton, all cotton. Other than that, I really don't buy it. I like the half and half video. Nice to see the angles and the light shade. Awesome. Yeah, I liked I liked recording it. It came out a little bit better than some of my other videos, but I was <laughs> I was really struggling with keeping that camera from wiggling because I had to have it on the handlebars because, like I said, it only, you know, the way the recording angle is, you know, and I haven't got my new, a new mount yet because I haven't found one that fits my specific phone. And since my other one broke, it doesn't even fit my regular camera anymore either, so... But I made sure I showed you guys that I kept going with rows and just put it all in fast forward to shorten the video, or else that video would have been two hours long. <laughs> so for those of you who have Westley rulers or any kind of arc rulers, you just make it work with your block. It's a really neat design that I did. I was playing with the rulers, and it took a minute to create it. But once it was created, it's like, oh, yeah, this is what I did. So I did it on the second one, and I was like, this is awesome. It's working out. So that's when I decided, okay, I need to video this. I like to play with the rulers of what I have. Sorry, I was looking at the time. Almost an hour and a half. But I have been lollygag talking. <laughs> Watch the quilting cow. That's what I just got a notica notification for, Diane. <laughs> Yeah, they don't make... I haven't found any thick cotton batting yet in the four years I've been quilting. Well, 
I went wobbly there. Oops. <laughs> oh, who's gonna know? Just me. Start from the beginning. Go until you can't reach no more. I don't recommend that. It's actually causing me to wobble. <laughs> Ladies, you may want. Is he doing it shirtless? Diane. I can only imagine. I'll go look when I'm done with my live. over 600 subscribers you messed up who me send me a link on facebook please i love to watch him twirl his baton <laughs> so oh, he's a hoot <laughs> definitely i actually have batons in here in this room that i could twirl for you guys but it's actually better to watch him do it i guess <laughs> Oh, I turned it around, by the way, to quilt, so I'm going the opposite way. It's fun to watch. Just don't let your husbands walk in, ladies, while you're watching. Of course, he's gay, so I guess it wouldn't matter. <laughs> tell your husband yeah he doesn't like me anyway so you don't have to be jealous <laughs> Every single one of these cotton threads are so dusty. I cannot stand dusty cotton thread, guys. I do use the, the glide on my machine, which is poly wrapped poly wrapped poly core. And I like when I use it on here. It's not that bad. There's absolutely no dust, but I can't afford to use that in here for piecing and for quilting out there. All right, where was I? Okay, I have no idea what is happening here. This is when I say, let's re-thread. Clear off some of this nastiness. It was not stitching at all, and then it was stitching too tight. Yesterday, cutting five inch and two point five inch from scraps. Well, that's what I need to do with all my scraps from long arm projects. I have all the sides and stuff. I usually cut them down into squares. I just haven't been doing it lately. There's a big pile on the floor. Um, this is waving her hand, saying hi. Aw, how cute. Okay, Lori got to run you. Okay, Lori, we'll see you next time. Um, Sandy, wish I looked close enough to see Kate. She's adorable. I have 
too. Where is she? So she made it last night, but it died, and then it was really a blessing. Vicky, I'll have to wait till tip is done. And that's not what I said. I said it was a blessing. <laughs> it's okay, Sandy. We understand when there's typos. I type typos all the time. Unfortunately, it happens. Let's see. Ah, it's stitching now. That was weird. Just needed to be rethread. Trying to pick all these excess threads away. Hey, Christine. Welcome. It just came through, Teresa, the notification to my phone. So, but Diane's already watched it. So that means my notification came in later. But I don't always get right now notifications either. Let's see. Now I know what's happening here. Oh, yeah. That was my problem the whole time, folks. This stupid pressure foot gauge. <laughs> it vibrate. This walking foot vibrated it loose all the way to the top. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I got to check that because the other machine don't have one of those. It's, the Juki has them, though. I don't know how many Juki models actually have it, but it's a gauge that allows how much pressure. So that's why my stitches were looking funny and or not connecting because there was no pressure on the gauge. And I only take it down to no pressure when I'm free motion quilting. If I break the needle right out. Really? Holy moly. I'd be scared of that breaking something. I ruined my needle plate. This is my second needle plate because of needles breaking randomly because it is a single hole machine as well. So if the needle bends at all from any kind of pulling or yanking or anything, it really, really, really messes it up. Okay, that was a little too tight. Watching tip. I'm working on a huge 2.5 inch scrap quilt. You're working on two and a half inch squares and a scrap quilt? Are you doing just all squares like postage stamp style? Or like my 25 catch blocks that I slowly haven't done anything with in a while, but I made a ton so far. Just need to make more. I drew up. 70 different variations, 76 different variations, somewhere in that number. few regular with patterns within. Oh, okay. It vibrates my foot off. Wow. I enjoy making patterns of 2.5 inch squares. So do I. I enjoy making stuff just period though. <laughs> I like it all. I like using um, jelly rolls, layer cakes, and uh, back quarter bundles and Five inch charm squares. Because it's already cut mostly and I can come up with something from there. That's my thing.
<laughs> Plus, it's the, it's controlled scrappy. I love scrappy, but control. Everyone likes controlled scrappy as well. <laughs> Right, just one, two, three, four, and I forgot that side. So five, six more times. And then I could be done and trim it. my eyes open okay brenda good night have a good rest have a good week that's what i was gonna say i agree on this girl dog is trying her best to make it like oh, well i love her i just can't get attached to her i really like making these blankets i plan to make grandson these for christmas oh that's fun Just got some mail and bought 48 half yards of boutiques that were eight dollars a meter. That's really cheap. Wow, that is really cheap. And I don't even know what you know your your price there compared to our price here. I know that you guys pay more there. Because boutiques are expensive here. I found them as cheap as eight ninety nine a yard. All right, two more here, then the two ends, and then I can trim them. So just slightly bigger than the yard i know that i just meant like price wise the comparison for like did you buy it american dollars or Yeah, I'm not going to free motion quilt anything in here. I think this is enough quilting with this one. All right. So I'm going to sew this last side down real quick, and then I will uh, trim it. Oh, you got 41 people watching you, honey. Yeah, I told you on Sundays is the most. Yeah, look at that. So Sunday is very important to us, isn't it, guys? Well, of course. <laughs> I agree. Oh, and Teresa, oh my God, oh my God. I got so excited using that ruler. I just got to tell you, I didn't use it to cut, cut, but I did put it on the fabric. And when you said it sticks to the fabric, it sticks to the fabric. I literally was barely touching and that ruler was moving the fabric. So I am 100% very, very, very happy. 
with your gift. Oh my God. Let me tell you, I had to bring Scott in here. I was like, oh my God, Scott, look, look at this ruler. She loves it. Uh, she was showing it off and trying to show me what the old ones do compared to the new ones. I stuck it on the ironing board and I tried to move it. It was moving the ironing board and I was just using one finger. Like it literally sticks to everything. So, oh my God, thank you so much. That she thing is it. amazing. So I definitely, in the future, 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 I have to invest in more rulers that stick like that because that is freaking awesome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vicky. Oh, yeah, Scott's in here, guys. <laughs> He's just shirtless. Shirtless. I'm I mean, not other getting on people camera. can do it, but... I'm not getting on it's... camera. If you're doing your thing, you don't need to see it's me. Other people have gone on YouTube shirtless, but yeah. I know to send a box of cereal from America to Australia. $25? Yeah, that's not happening. Hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Welcome. June. From St. John, BC. Yeah, where... she wants to know where we are. I am in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. She's in British Columbia, Canada, I do believe. Yes. We get a lot of Canadians here, snowbirds. Yes, we do. All right, guys, I'm going to adjust the camera mm -hmm. now. So Scott's going to have to take his shirtless self away. Mm -hmm. I just want to see you carefully. Nope, I don't. Whoa, don't drop, don't drop, don't fall, don't fall. All right, we're going to back you guys up. Look at that, you can see the cutting table now. Okay. I am going to trim this now. They're saying hi to you still, Scotty. Okay, well, he's saying hi. He's saying hi, 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 hi. He's telling everyone hi. <laughs> All right, I stuck it right here. That ruler. Let me tell you guys, you want an awesome ruler review? QuiltersSelect.com. <laughs> One finger. Obviously, the whole thing's hanging on the floor, too, but this ruler is something else. Let me tell you. All right, I'm going to start with the short side make this easy on myself put this on here grab myself a rotary cutter off the wall are you top stitching tiff I just quilted it stitched all the way around the edge and and quilted quilted ish so you actually have to pick it up to move it because it does take the fabric with it it doesn't slide very well but uh, if you're careful enough this thing is pretty darn awesome so I definitely have to thank Teresa. She's going to probably have to somehow. Actually, Teresa, you are at um, a whatever, so you can put links in there. So if anybody is curious in this and they ask you, you can actually put the link to the website this, this, um, that you purchased this so that if anyone wants to get a ruler that does this, look at that. Like, seriously, if anybody wants something like that, you can actually put the link for people to find this brand. I, I don't have a way to do that because I don't know where he got it and how much paid and all that stuff. I'm not going to be that nosy. <laughs> it was a gift. Okay. I'm going to cut this now. Look at that. No struggling. Oh, my God. That's why she got it, guys, because I was struggling. <laughs> all right. The rest of this up here. Slide this out of the way. Create myself a nice straight line. Bam, just like that. Oh, I don't like that. Right. There. Straight, straight, straight. Look, I just cut with ease. All right, throw that out of the way. Turn. I'll hold this up in a second. I, I'm not used to not being able to slide a ruler, guys. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. All right. I do have to trim this just a little bit on the quilt itself. I'm using... The only thing is I can't slide it. Straight, straight, straight. Oh, my God. actually using it not just messing with it now so you can see this is really awesome this was my birthday gift from Teresa guys 
so lined up and so lined up. I don't even have to hold the ruler. Like, that is so awesome. I need more. I need another one for the garage. No, I like the one I got in the garage because it's built in and I don't have nobody messing with my rotary cutter out there. <laughs> Look at that. I'm not even holding anything. Oh my goodness. Yes, it was because I was laying on it. Well, I do that. I don't know. It's it's a, a pain thing. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I do a lot of things weird because of my pain. And I get frustrated easily and because of the pain. The pain does a lot to us. Look, I'm not even... Like, let's see. I just one finger that, guys. One finger. <laughs> this company needs props for this brand of ruler. This is crazy. The only thing that I don't like is that you gotta pick it up every time. Because it doesn't adjust. So you gotta actually pick it up and move it. But that's okay. I'll get used to it. Look at that. Cutting these. This is so awesome. Got those stickers. I use um, sticker wise for the other rulers. I hot glue gun on all of my fussy cut type rulers. Then on one of my big ones, I have hot glue gun, but just a small dab of glue. Like seriously, guys. And then the other ones, you know that hospital tape stuff, that clear tape? That's what's on my other rulers. And it, they don't slip and slide everywhere. On my big long ones, though, I kind of like the movement of the being able to move the ruler because it, um, I don't know how to say this. That way I can adjust where I need it to be easier, I guess is the word for it. I'm using the lines on the quilt to make the lines on the ruler nice and straight to have a straight line. So if it looks like I'm cutting cricket, I'm not. It just looks like it. Oh, I'm all the way to the other side already. I'm gonna have to retrim it though. trimming this side because everything adjusted just right. Oh, and it's an eight and a half. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight and a half by, where's the number? 24, by the way, for anybody that's curious. Eight and a half by 24. That's straight. That's on a line. That's on a line. Right there. Perfect, perfect, beautiful, perfect. Sorry, I'm straightening up the, the side. Stay. Okay. Not should be good. Straighten up that line. Oh, well, that wasn't that far. That wasn't that far off. There we go. All right, guys. I just need to bind it with something. I don't know what I'm going to bind it with. So it's tall. So here's it on the floor. It's really tall. But like I said, it fits on a, a toddler bed perfectly. So. Oh. This fabric smells like fabric softener. That smells good. <laughs> so there it is. So I know I made this in a video. I just know it. I just don't remember. And here's the backing fabric. Remember I said it's little cherries or no strawberries. And I guess that's a flower. And it's pink. 
So it's definitely the perfect size to cuddle up and go outside and like people who live in cooler areas in the summertime, like here it's too hot, but like if you live in a cool mountain area and in the summertime you're going out and say watching fireworks on 4th of July, you can just, only reason why I said 4th of July is because these look like firework bursts. <laughs> just cuddle up with your quilt and watch the fireworks. So it's definitely a nice size. And it's tall. So that's it. I'll figure out what to do with uh, the binding. If I'll use the backing as the binding or if I just take a different color like white and bind it. I don't know. Don't know just yet, but for now it could go here. And for those of you that missed it, I haven't posted a video. Here's the quilting from the video that I did. <laughs> that's what it looks like. So half of this quilt is yellow. Half of it is gray. And the border. That's what I put bonus border. I didn't actually describe what I was doing, but this is what I did. And I know you guys are thinking, what the heck? The binding will cover that. But actually, that was what I'm going for, is some weird, funky end. So it goes like that all the way around. And half of the quilt is one color. And then the opposite border color on the opposite side. So this one is going to get bound only because of the green. It's going to get bound in this color because Alexa said, don't dull it out, mom, by using the same as the gray. So I'm going to use this color because it's also in the back. So that's the binding that this will get. Oh, and the back looks really cool because of the quilting. Look at that. Because I used the turquoise thread throughout the whole thing. So I think it definitely is cute. You can see the stitching and all the stuff I'm picking up off my floor. <laughs> Doesn't that look cool? The, the way it's quilted. So, And of course, like always, I centered it. As best as I could, at least. But that's that. So now I have two quilts to bind, and I will do that another time. Not right this minute. And yeah, that's it. That's all I got, guys, so far. Oh, and there's all the blocks again, one more time. That's everything that came in so far. So if you see yours, you know who you are. I'm just holding it there so you guys can see. Christine binding is your least favorite. I actually like every step, every single step to quilting. Set that down just a little. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting off right now. Okay. Anyways, guys. Yeah, I said happy Veterans Day for tomorrow to everyone, and I said happy birthday to the Marine Corps in the beginning of this video. Oh, so, bleh. <laughs> all right, guys. She's hinting at me. Finding. Okay. All right, guys. Anyway. I'm glad you guys got to join me for another So Sunday and a successful one. I had to just find now. That's it. <laughs> Finally got something else quilted and it's so lofty. It feels good. Anyway, um, if you were new to my channel, don't forget to head down there, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, get notifications when I'm live, like and share my videos. Other than that, I will see you guys uh, next Sunday and or some insomniac or whatever happens this week. I don't know because I never know in advance, but Hopefully you'll start seeing more and more videos from me. I'm, I'm trying, guys. I'm really trying. So see you next time. Love you all. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Bye.